Chapter 3 Now Moses was keeping the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the wilderness, and came to God's mountain, to Horeb. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Moses said, I will turn aside now and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the midst of the bush, and said, Moses, Moses. He said, Here I am. He said, Don't come close. Take off your sandals from off your feet, for the place you are standing on is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows, and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Now behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me. Moreover, I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Moses said to God, Who am I, that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? He said, Certainly I will be with you. This will be the token to you that I have sent you. When you have brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Moses said to God, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel and tell them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What should I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, you shall tell the children of Israel this, I am has sent me to you. God said moreover to Moses, You shall tell the children of Israel this, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together, and tell them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob, has appeared to me, saying, I have surely visited you, and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, to a land flowing with milk and honey. They will listen to your voice, and you shall come, you and the elders of Israel, to the king of Egypt, and you shall tell him, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. Now please let us go three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. I know that the king of Egypt won't give you permission to go, no, not by a mighty hand. I will put forth my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders which I will do in the midst of it, and after that he will let you go. I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it will happen that when you go, you shall not go empty-handed. But every woman shall ask of her neighbor, and of her who visits her house, jewels of silver, jewels of gold, and clothing. And you shall put them on your sons and on your daughters. You shall despoil the Egyptians. Now it happened on the second Sabbath after the first that he was going through the grain fields. His disciples plucked the heads of grain and ate, rubbing them in their hands. 
But some of the Pharisees said to them, Why do you do that which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath day? Jesus answering them said, Haven't you read what David did when he was hungry, he and those who were with him, how he entered into the house of God, and took and ate the showbread, and gave also to those who were with him, which is not lawful to eat except for the priest alone? He said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. It also happened on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. There was a man there, and his right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would heal on the Sabbath, that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts, and said to the man who had the withered hand, Rise up and stand in the middle. He arose and stood. Then Jesus said to them, I will ask you something. Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save a life or to kill? He looked around at them all and said to him, Stretch out your hand. He did, and his hand was restored as sound as the other. But they were filled with rage and talked with one another about what they might do to Jesus. It happened in these days that he went out to the mountain to pray, and he continued all night in prayer to God. When it was day, he called his disciples, and from them he chose twelve, whom he also named apostles, Simon, whom he also named Peter, Andrew his brother, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who also became a traitor. He came down with them and stood on a level place, with a crowd of his disciples and a great number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, as well as those who were troubled by unclean spirits, and they were being healed. All the multitude sought to touch him, for power came out from him and healed them all. He lifted up his eyes to his disciples and said, Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from them, and reproach you, and throw out your name as evil, for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for their fathers did the same thing to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe when men speak well of you, for their fathers did the same thing to the false prophets. But I tell you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who insult you. To him who strikes you on the cheek, offer also the other, and from him who takes away your cloak, don't withhold your coat also. Give to everyone who asks of you, and don't ask him who takes away your goods to give them back again. As you would like people to do to you, do exactly so to them. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive back as much. But love your enemies, and do good, and lend, expecting nothing back. And your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for He is kind toward the unthankful and evil. Therefore be merciful, even as your Father is also merciful. Don't judge, and you won't be judged. Don't condemn, and you won't be condemned. Set free, and you will be set free. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be given to you. For with the same measure you measure, it will be measured back to you. He spoke a parable to them. Can the blind guide the blind? Won't they both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone when he is fully trained will be like his teacher. Why do you seek the speck of chaff that is in your brother's eye, but don't consider the beam that is in your own eye? Or how can you tell your brother, Brother, let me remove the speck of chaff that is in your eye, when you yourself don't see the beam that is in your own eye, you hypocrite! First remove the beam from your own eye, and then you can see clearly to remove the speck of chaff that is in your brother's eye. For there is no good tree that brings forth rotten fruit, nor again a rotten tree that brings forth good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. 
for people don't gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. The good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings out that which is good, and the evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings out that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do the things which I say? Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you who he is like. He is like a man building a house, who dug and went deep, and laid a foundation on the rock. When a flood arose, the stream broke against that house, and could not shake it, because it was founded on the rock. But he who hears and doesn't do, is like a man who built a house on the earth, without a foundation, against which the stream broke, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Chapter 20 Then so far the Namathite answered, Therefore do my thoughts give answer to me, even by reason of my haste that is in me. I have heard the reproof which puts me to shame. The spirit of my understanding answers me. Don't you know this from old time, since man was placed on the earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, the joy of the godless but for a moment? Though his height mount up to the heavens, and his head reach to the clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. Those who have seen him shall say, Where is he? He shall fly away as a dream, and shall not be found. Yes, he shall be chased away like a vision of the night. The eye which saw him shall see him more, neither shall his place any more see him. His children shall seek the favor of the poor, his hand shall give back his wealth. His bones are full of his youth, but youth shall lie down with him in the dust. Though wickedness is sweet in his mouth, though he hide it under his tongue, though he spare it and will not let it go, but keep it still within his mouth, yet his food in his bowels is turned, it is cobra venom within him. He has swallowed down riches, and he shall vomit them up again. God will cast them out of his belly. He shall suck cobra venom, the viper's tongue shall kill him. He shall not look at the rivers, the flowing streams of honey and butter. That for which he labored he shall restore, and shall not swallow it down. According to the substance that he has gotten, he shall not rejoice. For he has oppressed and forsaken the poor. He has violently taken away a house, and he shall not build it up. Because he knew no quietness within him, he shall not save anything of that in which he delights." There was nothing left that he didn't devour, therefore his prosperity shall not endure. In the fullness of his sufficiency, distress shall overtake him. The hand of every one who is in misery shall come on him. When he is about to fill his belly, God will cast the fierceness of his wrath on him. It will rain on him while he is eating. He shall flee from the iron weapon. The bronze arrow shall strike him through. He draws it forth, and it comes out of his body. Yes, the glittering point comes out of his liver. Terrors are on him. All darkness is laid up for his treasures. An unfanned fire shall devour him. It shall consume that which is left in his tent. The heaven shall reveal his iniquity. The earth shall rise up against him. The increase of his house shall depart. They shall rush away in the day of his wrath. This is the portion of a wicked man from God, the heritage appointed to him by God. Now concerning the things about which you wrote to me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. But, because of sexual immoralities, let each man have his own wife, and let each woman have her own husband. Let the husband render to his wife the affection owed her, and likewise also the wife to her husband. The wife doesn't have authority over her own body but the husband. Likewise also the husband doesn't have authority over his own body but the wife. Don't deprive one another unless it is by consent for a season, that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and may be together again, 
that Satan doesn't tempt you because of your lack of self-control. But this I say by way of concession, not of commandment. Yet I wish that all men were like me. However, each man has his own gift from God, one of this kind and another of that kind. But I say to the unmarried and to widows, it is good for them if they remain even as I am. But if they don't have self-control, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. But to the married I command, not I but the Lord, that the wife not leave her husband. But if she departs, let her remain unmarried, or else be reconciled to her husband, and that the husband not leave his wife. But to the rest I, not the Lord, say, If any brother has an unbelieving wife, and she is content to live with him, let him not leave her. The woman who has an unbelieving husband, and he is content to live with her, let her not leave her husband. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified in the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified in the husband. Otherwise your children would be unclean, but now are they holy. Yet if the unbeliever departs, let there be separation. The brother or the sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us in peace. For how do you know, wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, husband, whether you will save your wife? Only, as the Lord has distributed to each man, as God has called each, so let him walk. So I command in all the assemblies. Was anyone called having been circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Has anyone been called in uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing, but the keeping of the commandments of God. Let each man stay in that calling in which he was called. Were you called being a bondservant? Don't let that bother you, but if you get an opportunity to become free, use it. For he who was called in the Lord, being a bondservant, is the Lord's free man. Likewise, he who was called being free is Christ's bondservant. You were bought with a price. Don't become bondservants of men. Brothers, let each man, in whatever condition he was called, stay in that condition with God. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment from the Lord, but I give my judgment as one who has obtained mercy from the Lord to be trustworthy. I think that it is good, therefore, because of the distress that is on us, that it is good for a man to be as he is. Are you bound to a wife? Don't seek to be freed. Are you free from a wife? Don't seek a wife. But if you marry, you have not sinned. If a virgin marries, she has not sinned. Yet such will have oppression in the flesh, and I want to spare you. But I say this, brothers, the time is short, that from now on both those who have wives may be as though they had none, and those who weep as though they didn't weep, and those who rejoice as though they didn't rejoice, and those who buy as though they didn't possess, and those who use the world as not using it to the fullest, for the mode of this world passes away. But I desire to have you be free from cares. He who is unmarried is concerned for the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he who is married is concerned about the things of the world, how he may please his wife. There is also a difference between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares about the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she who is married cares about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. This I say for your own profit, not that I may ensnare you, but for that which is appropriate, and that you may attend to the Lord without distraction. But if any man thinks that he is behaving inappropriately toward his virgin, if she is past the flower of her age, and if need so requires, let him do what he desires, he doesn't sin let them marry. But he who stands steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but has power over his own heart to keep his own virgin, does well. So then both he who gives his own virgin in marriage does well, and he who doesn't give her in marriage does better. A wife is bound by law for as long as her husband lives. But if the husband is dead, she is free to be married to whoever she desires, only in the Lord. But she is happier if she stays as she is in my judgment, and I think that I also have God's Spirit. 